Welcome everybody to the Mysteries of the Library Revealed Boolean Operators. We just want to say hi to everyone and we're going to turn off our cameras so they don't interfere with the rest of the session. Um, my name is Kim Burton. I am one of the liaisons to the College of Education and with me is Ann Rojas, <clears throat> who is the other liaison to the College of Education. And tonight we're going to be talking about Boolean operators. Before we get talking about that, I just want to go over what the Mysteries of the Library Revealed webinar series are. This is a webinar series that we present every month. It is usually the third month of the holiday, um, I'm sorry, the third Monday of the month uh, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, unless of course that's a holiday. Our next webinars that are coming up will be Mysteries of the Library Revealed, Organization and Storage in March. And in April, we're doing a Mysteries of the Library Revealed Scholar Works. So for those of you who do not know Scholar Works, this is the Walden Institutional Repository and has a lot of great things in it. So I really recommend that you um, plan to come to that one or the one in March. If you can't make it on either of these two days, you can always register. Anybody who registers for a webinar will receive a recording of that webinar in one or two days, regardless of whether or not you attend. So with that being said, I'm now gonna turn it over to Anne. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so everybody wonders what are Boolean operators and just going to say that Boole was a genius mathematician who lived in the 19th century and there are three Boolean operators based on his work. They are AND, OR, and NOT. And all databases work on Boolean principles, whether you're searching in Google or in a library database. So they come in really handy. So Anne, can I ask you a question though? What about if you're searching online somewhere else? Could you use these there? Oh, yep. Everywhere. Uh, Amazon, Netflix, all all databases work uh, on these principles. That's oh. why he was a genius, because his <laughs> principles still apply two centuries later. It's like he knew what was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the reason they're important in the library is because you have to explicitly tell the database how you're using them, and as opposed to like in Google, where they're they're pretty much assumed. So, so that's the biggest difference between our Google style search box on the home page, and um and how you search in google itself sorry so that's okay so <laughs> so databases work like google but not exactly like google so in order to use uh use that and do precision searches and get accurate results um you want to put your search together with and or and not so let's look at them in action if we go into the library home page um did and you we want, want to, to do that or did you want to yep if uh if you want to push it over to me i can present yeah. or you can do it there i'm going to make you presenter okay great so um if i want to use this main search box on the library home page and i put in my search query i want to know how library use increases student success in college and I put that in and I click on search. I'm going to be uh, probably very disappointed because, well, hopefully it'll, it'll give us something here. Uh, basically, uh, because I'm not telling it exactly how to search, I'm just giving it a full sentence and it doesn't know how to read it. So I, you can see here it says there were no results returned for your search. And it does have a link here to help you with database search techniques. Um, if you want to click into that, you can do that. Uh, but just to show you what the difference is, and the re so the reason that we want to tell you about this is because a lot of people get really frustrated. They put their search in like this, and they don't get any results, and they leave the library because it's not working for them. But you only have to put in a little bit of effort in order to get some good results. So if I put in library and academic success and college to look and see what kind of research I can find or what kind of articles I can find that uh, consider all of those topics together, you can see that I get 1,200 results. So way better results um, 
and like I said, it just takes a couple of uh, couple of seconds to put it together so that you get results. And you can see here you've got Find at Walden buttons. You've got some of them are available in full text. Uh, you can limit the dates. You can limit to peer review. All of those things uh, based on what your assignment is requiring. And so in order to look at that um, a little bit more in detail, what I'll do is go back into the PowerPoint here. Uh, let's see. Sorry, it's showing it on the wrong screen for me, so I'm just going to move that over here and show you in my Venn diagram how it works. Now it's showing it still in the other screen. Sorry. So if we're looking at um, doing research on people who watch the Game of Thrones and uh, Blackish, even even though it's counterintuitive, we're going to get just uh, a limited number of results. The little bit of overlap uh, of those two when I use and. So and is going to give me fewer results. Um, with or, sorry, I had to unplug my other screen, so now I'm a little thrown off. That's so right. if I use if I use or and I say I want to do um, research on people who watch Game of Thrones or Blackish, then it's going to give me everything, everybody in both circles. It doesn't care which one. So uh, that's or is going to always give me more. And then uh, not is a little bit trickier because uh, not, you're kind of inevitably going to miss out on a little bit of what you're interested in. So if I'm looking at people who watch uh, Blackish but not Game of Thrones, I'm going to be missing that little chunk of overlap because it's going to take out the people who wa watch both. So I'm going to get like a cookie shaped uh, results list and miss a few of the people who do watch Blackish. Um, so we use not, but uh, only only in very specific circumstances. So then um, let's just look at one more example of how OR works and how you can get more. So if I'm looking at people who watch any of these three dramas, uh, The Americans, Game of Thrones, uh, or This Is Us, I would get everybody in all three circles. And likewise with the comedies, I could look at people who watch any of these three comedies. And what I could do is put those together and and look at um, people who watch Game of Thrones or The Americans or This Is Us and Blackish or Brooklyn or Great News. And I would get just that little bit of overlap, but I'm giving it a lot more combinations that it can find that it'll work to give me uh, results lists. So that that is just um, a quick way to to see it in Venn diagrams. And uh, Kim can show us how that applies. Absolutely. Let me to guess. working in databases. All right. I just have to scroll forward to where we were. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Anne. All right. So now that we know what Boolean operators are and how they work, we need to see how we can use them in different databases. Now, a database is um, a library database is a searchable digital collection of different types of materials, uh, such as books, journals, magazines, newspapers, dissertations, and so on. Walden Library has paid subscriptions to over 100 library databases. Now, these databases are available to us through several different providers, and each provider has designed their own look and interface for their databases. So although they may not look the same, they all share the same functionality or mostly the same functionality. Uh, they're all built to use Boolean operators to provide efficient, highly complex searches to find relevant and focused results. Boolean operators are the key to using these databases. So I have here um, an example of two databases that we have here. Um, these two databases 
actually are already set up with the and Boolean operator in front of each search box. So the first one is this database is Academic Search Complete, and it is provided to us by EBSCOhost. And you can see the and is set up before each search box. So when I take my topic and I break it up into concepts, so I, let's say I'm talking about teenager drug abuse in rural areas, my concepts would be teenager and drug abuse and rural. I want to take one of those concepts and put it in each box. So I have teenager, I want resources, they have to have teenager and drug abuse and rural. Here it is in uh, ProQuest Central, another database that we have at the library. You could see it's set up the same, it looks different, but it has the same functionality. It has the and in front of it, uh, teenager and drug abuse and rural. Now, if you click on these down arrow, you can change the Boolean operator, but we recommend that you don't do that. Leave it as and, and then you can add the or Boolean operator in the search box itself. And we'll get to not a little bit later on. So what I wanna do right now is I just wanna go out into one of our databases and um, show you how this works. So I'm going to go to uh, the library website and I'm going to go into databases A to Z and then select academic search complete. And this is a database that we get through EBSCO. So here it is. And it's probably gonna look familiar to you. Many of you have used these EBSCO databases, but it says right here, this is the name of the database. And let's use the example that I was just saying. My topic is about teenagers and drug abuse in rural areas. Um, and just so I don't get a thousand results, I'm going to put a few limiters on here. I only want articles from 2006 from peer-reviewed scholarly journals. So when I hit search, I get eight results. But I'm thinking that this is a topic that should have a few more results. I mean, there should be a few more articles out there on this. So what I wanna do is I wanna find additional terms to add to this search, and I'm gonna use the Boolean operator or that Anne was talking about earlier to expand it. So I'm going to look in the title of the article. I wanna look in the subject terms. So the subject terms are basically tags that the databases have assigned to articles in their database. And they're saying that this article is about teenagers and substance abuse. It's about parent and teenager. Two things I see right off is first of all, adolescence. That's another term for teenagers. So I wanna add that and I'm gonna use the or. So now I want articles that have, are about teenagers or adolescents, but then they also have to have drug abuse and rural. Um, I have substance use in here. So I could use that. I also want to expand my search to not only include drug abuse, but also alcohol abuse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add all of those, drug abuse or substance abuse or alcohol abuse. I can add as many search terms as I want in this box, as long as all of the search terms are alternative keywords for each other or synonyms. Um, and then I can also just brainstorm. So um, I know, Sometimes rural can also be used as remote. Now, I'm going to hit search. And since I added all these additional terms with or, I should get more results back. And I do. I get 56 results back. I'm always looking for additional terms. I'm always going through here to look for um, additional terms to add. If I click on the title of an article, it will bring me to a detailed record. And here, I can go down and read the abstract to see if there's anything else in here I may want to add to uh, my search. One thing I can do here is something called uh, truncation. So truncation is when you can take a root word and tell the database just to search for this root word. So here we have teenagers. I can take this and change it to teen with an asterisk. That's the shift eight key, the little star key. When I do that, now the database is going to look for teen, but it's also gonna look for teenagers. It's gonna look for anything that starts with T-E-E-N. I could do the same for adolescents. I could look for adolescents and adolescent. 
by removing the CE and putting that asterisk in there. So now when I hit search, hopefully I will find more results. And I did just by doing that, I added, maybe I doubled my results. So this is how you can use those Boolean operators to narrow and expand your searches in an EBSCO database. I also want to jump in and show you this in a Pro, in ProQuest Central. But before I do this, uh, I just have to mention that um, I have to thank Anne for this because when we were planning this webinar, I was mentioning to her that I don't like the not Boolean operator because it can eliminate eliminate relevant results in your search. And I was even thinking, not even bringing it up here, but Anne, because she's a librarian and I threw the gauntlet <laughs> down, came up with a, the perfect example of when you probably really should use not um, and it, as a in your search and it will be pretty beneficial. So again, I'm going to go to databases and this time we're going to go to ProQuest Central. And where was it? ProQuest Central, there it is. Also, um, a, a good question came through because you're always capitalizing the words and, or, right. and not. Uh, and so just to, mm -hmm. to answer that, um, it's a good idea to get in the habit of capitalizing them because mm -hmm. some databases require it. Not all of them, but some. Right. So you might as well just get used to doing it now. All right, so now uh, let's say you want to do, uh, you're doing research on apple crops and sustainability. So ProQuest, in here I'm going to type in apple, and in here I'm going to type in sustainability. See, did I type that, that right? Okay, and I'm just going to um, limit this to the last three months. And I'm going to hit search. So we have apple and sustainability. So my, everything's going to have both of those things in it. Oh, pro, oh, good. Okay, so I get back these results, over a thousand results, but when I go through here, look what I see, iPhone. It's bringing back Apple computer, and I don't want anything to do with Apple computer. I just want to know about Apple crops. So I'm going to go back to modify search, and I am going to add a row, and now I'm going to change this to the not. And I am going, I'm actually just going to copy what I have here in my notes. I'm telling it that, look for, it has to have Apple in it, it has to have sustainability, but it can't have computer, it can't have iPhone or iPad or mobile device or phone. So now I'm going to hit search. And it narrows it down and it takes out the iPhone from there. Um, another thing that I could do here is get rid of the ability and just do sustain with an asterisk. And now it's going to search for Apple and sustain and um, sustainability, but not all of these terms. So when I hit search, this is going to kind of expand it out a little bit more. Yeah. So now it went way out. Oh, wait, it brought back some apples in there too. I'd have to fix this one again. But that just gives you an idea of how you can use the Boolean operators to um, get those really take complex searches and get relevant results. We do have a couple of other uh, databases I wanted to show you here. Um, some of the library databases start off with the assumption that the researcher is aware of how Boolean operators work and they expect you to use them in your searches. They're not set up like the EBSCO databases I showed you or the ProQuest one. Um, they're in here, they're, they want you to use them. It, it just has a plain line in this one for Science Direct. And here, it doesn't say and, it's just saying where you're supposed to be searching. So I wanna go in and just show you uh, an example of searching in Sage Journals, how you can um, use those Boolean operators just like you can in the other databases. Uh, before I do so, I just want to point out that these databases have little links if you get stuck. So if you're in Sage and they don't have those Boolean operators there, you can just go over here and click on this and you'll find more information about using Boolean operators in Sage. Down here, I was in ScienceDirect, which is a different database, and I typed in teenagers and drug abuse and rural, and I got this little tip 
that it's not necessary to specify and operator explicitly since all terms are and by default. So it's basically saying I can type in here teenagers, drug abuse and rural and it would put the and in between them. Uh, what time do we have? Yeah, I'm just we're, gonna we're doing fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Then I'm just going to jump into Sage. Science Direct is more like Google. <laughs> yeah, Science Direct is more like Google. Uh, but it's funny though because what actually it's going to do if I just put in teenagers, drug abuse, rural, it would search for teenagers and drug and abuse and rural. So search for <laughs> abuse separately. So I'd want to put that into quotation so it searches those two not drug and abuse, but drug abuse together. Because then it would bring in like violence and, or domestic violence and things like that. Right. So here I am at Sage Journal. I'm going to click on Advanced. And here's the search. So Sage Journals also is just like Science Direct. It puts the and automatically in between everything when, I, when I'm searching in here. So when I want to do a search for, um, let's see, teenager, and here, drug abuse, I want to put drug abuse in quotes because I want drug abuse as a term. So the quotes tells the database, those two words have to be together. If you don't want drug on page five and abuse on page seven. And then here I'm doing rural. I'll go ahead and hit search. And I got 553 results. So I can refine this search by adding in it or add a, and I can use the truncation as well. Or remote, and now it should bring back more results. Yeah, it brought back over 2000 results here. Um, all of these, the um, Boolean operators, all work this in the databases. That's what they're there. They're the key for getting you those good results. So Kim, have you ever come up to a maximum number in a search box? Because I've ordered out a lot of stuff in a single search box before and I've never come to a maximum. No, I haven't. The only place I have come to a maximum with, um, with an or was actually um, in Google Scholar. I've done, oh, I was doing, funny. yeah, I, we, I wasn't having good luck in a database. So I just copied my exact search out of the database and put it in Google Scholar and it just stopped. It wouldn't go on. It just cut off the last like three or four words. I, I'll have to go back and check on that and see exactly how, how long it does let you get in there. But that is another limit um, that we have to Google Scholar. So um, this slide has links to some uh, references we have for you. Uh, the first one is the quick answer. Uh, what are Boolean operators? That kind of just gives you a, a quick answer to what they are and links to other uh, the content we have in the library. The next link is a link to the library guide connecting keywords with Boolean operators uh, that just goes over what I and Anne we're talking about tonight. And then we also have a short video, Boolean operators and truncation. Also, this one's very short and just talks about in a very broad sense what we were talking about tonight. So if you have um, any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in the question box right now. Um, I want to show you a few other things that we have in the library. We have to get your answers, to get you answers to your questions. If you're, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say somebody did have a question of asking if there's a number of search results that you should try to obtain. And really the answer is always, it depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the important thing is that you get results that work for whatever project you're working on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes you can get some results and like this results in Sage, um, that's a lot. I, I would want to narrow this down because this isn't something that I'm going to be able to read 2,400 articles for a weekly assignment, you know. So what I would want to do here is I would want to add maybe another search term to it or, or you know, somehow trying to narrow it down a little so I don't have so many, such as just limiting it to a research article over here on the right. Uh, I wanted to point out to you where you can go to get answers to your questions right up here on this banner across the top of every website in the library, you can click on Ask a Librarian. Um, here you can email us. We answer emails seven days a week. 
uh, not 24 hours, but usually uh, we have a pretty good turnaround. Um, we do have chat. When you go into chat, today's date would be highlighted with the hours in Eastern time that chat is open and chat is actually open right now. Um, you can call us and leave a voicemail message and we will return that voicemail message by email, um, ho hopefully answering your question. Um, and you can also make a doctoral research appointment if you're at the doctoral level with a library liaison in your college and program. Um, you can also go over here on the left hand side, there's a frequently asked question, quick answers. And if you have a question and you can go right over here and type in Boolean, hit return and it's going to bring up a bunch of links about uh, Boolean operators. So you can just click on that and it'll tell, it even has a link to the upcoming webinar on Boolean operators. Um, and it'll help walk you through the steps of what we were just talking about. Finally, we do have under the get help in the library and recorded webinars under library skills. We have all of the recorded webinars for the Mysteries of the Library Revealed series. These are all half hour webinars on a specific topic in the library. Uh, we go over them uh, short and brief just to give you a general idea, but to hopefully give you enough information that you can get in and start using these resources. And if you do have further questions, uh, we hope that we have been able to also point you in the right direction where you can get answers to those questions, specifically ask a librarian or quick answers. So here's a list of all the different ones we have so far. So, and also at the end of this webinar, you will have a survey. So if there is a webinar that you do not see here, or there's a topic that you would like to learn more about in the library, please uh, give us a suggestion. We're always looking for suggestions on uh, what we should be presenting for you guys. So does anyone have any other questions? I think we have everything else taken care of. Uh, there was a question about dissertations. The dissertations databases use the ProQuest interface. So it looks like the second example that mm -hmm. Kim used. So yeah, the Boolean, Boole, Boole is everywhere. Good old it Boole. Is. We can use it everywhere. So yeah, dissertations and theses is provided to us by ProQuest. So it's set up exactly the same as we were in ProQuest Central, but it's only searching dissertations and theses at Walden University. So great. Uh, so we um, we are two minutes early. <laughs> we can give you guys back two minutes of your time tonight. So thank you everybody for joining us, and uh, please you know register for next month's webinar if you have a chance, um, or watch some of these uh, recorded ones. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. Ask questions as they arise. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well then, I'm gonna end the recording and uh, st stop the webinars. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.